Okay, so right off the bat, I feel like an idiot. Uh, this is my first tech conference, and I just thought that all the presenters were supposed to dress like this. <laughs> and now I see that literally nobody is dressed like this, and I feel like a big dum dum. I've never worn a turtleneck before. They're really uncomfortable. They seem to accentuate some of my worst features. <laughs> These glasses are hurting my eyes. I don't even wear glasses. Still got the sticker on these stupid jeans. <laughs> uh, but that's okay, we'll power through this, or should I say we'll PowerPoint through this. <laughs> okay, a lot of groans. <clears throat> I have socks. Uh, so if I make bad puns and they don't go over well, I'll throw socks. Um, I work at uh, Poncho. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Poncho, we send funny conversational weather forecasts. Um, we, have, we send them through text message, email, uh, app, and bot. Um, and this is me. Um, I, uh, am a, I've been doing comedy in New York since 2007. Um, I come from a copywriting background. I also send texts and emails, um, just like to my friends. Um, <laughs> I'm not a bot, I don't think, yet. Um, so like I said, I come from a, a social media copywriting background. That was my last job. Um, for those of you who don't know what social media copywriting is, it's basically just looking up synonyms for the word great. Um, so. I would work on uh, men's fashion brands. Uh, I won't say which ones, but I will say you've heard of them. I guarantee it. Uh, <laughs> and, and I would just write, like, these loafers are awesome. Uh, <laughs> that was the whole job. And it sucked. I didn't like doing that. It was boring and arbitrary. Um, and anytime I did try to throw in some, like, creative, funny stuff, it would be met with, uh, my boss has to clear it, his boss has to clear it, the client has to clear it, the client's boss has to clear it, and it would ultimately be deemed too risky. So it's like really like I can't say these new loafers are the best thing since sliced bread, because loaf and bread, uh, <laughs> because it's too risky. Um, so that was annoying. And it, it drove me to like fuel that en energy into a, a, a dummy Twitter uh, page where I would write fake copy when I would see the, the terrible stock images that brands were using. Um, and I would have like, TGI Fridays, we have zero cameras in our bathrooms. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then I started working at Poncho and it was totally different. Um, it was you know, a smaller team and I was working with actual comedians, so it would be like, I'd do a show at night, and then I'd be working with that person the next day, writing jokes for a brand. Um, and they let the creatives be creative, which is like the first thing I want to um, tell you guys is to let creatives be creative. And also, you can get comedians for like super cheap uh, to do stuff for you. So <laughs> just remember that. Um, and so at Poncho, they just let us you know, get away with stuff, and it worked because our audience really liked it. And they started um, you know, interacting with Poncho more and seeing it as a friend. And we could do things like a 420 forecast. Um, we're looking at highs all across the country, man. To be blunt, there's hazy clouds and some rain, but not too much. And like the other brand, <laughs> uh, the other br it's not all puns, by the way. Okay, I know you, I know you're thinking that. Uh, but um, but like other brands wouldn't let us do that kind of stuff. But it's not gonna kill your brand to have a 420 forecast. Um, so uh, so that's that point. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is so. Weather is boring, right? Um, it's generally known that the most boring sentence you can say is, some weather we're having. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Uh, at my last job, I was in line for the bathroom, and somebody came up behind me and was like, lines, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's the most boring sentence you can say, followed by the some weather we're having. Um, and so our founder, Quan, uh, was like, weather's boring. What if it wasn't? Which is the most tech thing you can say. Um, <laughs> but he was right. Um, we wanted to make weather not boring. So we created this character 
uh, Poncho, um, who is a hipster cat that lives in Brooklyn, eats a lot of pizza, drinks a lot of beer, loves the USA Network randomly, and uh, has a slight gambling problem. Um, <laughs> some characteristics that I have in common with him. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and you can already see how weather is becoming more interesting. So I'm going to talk about um, the character thing, but I want you to think of your brand or yourself or whatever you're here trying to improve um, and sub in character for that, because I think that brands should have character. Um, so first thing we did was create a character Bible or character Bible, uh, which I wanted to go over quickly with you now. So weather is one of Poncho's passions and his longest lasting. So um, everything we do is anchored around weather and then we branch out from there. Uh, we do horoscopes and word of the day and all these other things, but we never forget that the weather has to be good and the technology has to be good for the weather um, and we have to get that part right. Poncho works at Poncho HQ, a loosely defined media tech company. So everybody works for the most part. And our whole thing is that we want people to see Poncho as a friend. So he has to have some personality and thoughts on things. He hates work, he hates his boss, his coworkers are always stealing his food, stuff like that. Um, uh, so our, we are on Facebook message, text, and email. And the native content for those um, platforms is your friends. Your friends and family are generally the ones to text you. Uh, so you have to think of Poncho as a friend. Um, so we pull a lot of that from this character Bible. Poncho lives in an apartment in Brooklyn with a couple of roommates. We chose Brooklyn because everybody has thoughts on people that live in Brooklyn, <laughs> whether you live there or not. You either know somebody who lives there or have an idea of what type of person lives there. I live there, uh, so it's okay for me to say that. Um, in this universe, Poncho is the only anthropomorphic animal. Poncho has repressed most of his cat-like behavior. Those are just weird decisions you get to make when you do a character Bible. So no lesson there, just do that. Uh, do your own character Bible and you can make up those decisions. He has paws, not hands, has a tail, but doesn't make a show of it. That's like a design thing. We actually um, mimicked this off of the Roadrunner um, character Bible, which you can find online. Uh, you never hear or see Poncho talk and he most definitely doesn't meow except uh, this year when he won a Webby and had to do a five word speech, uh, which I thought should be Al Roker can suck it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we went with, uh, does this come with fries? Um, so uh, Poncho is pretty self-contained but opens up after a couple beers. Um, so this is like, this is like the heart of where the editorial team can pull content from this character Bible. Um, and it's, good because it lets the audience know what this character is and like they're never surprised by stuff. Um, so like when we, you know that Poncho's got a little bit of a drinking problem and you send a forecast that's like, got a night gig at the uh, neighborhood bar I passed all the time. Hear that mom? I passed the bar and got a job. Um, throw socks on that one. Anybody? Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, or if he says, I don't think it's gonna rain tonight where you are tonight, but I had what's known as liquid lunch, so I don't know. Um, so those kind of things are like, you know uh, as a Poncho user that you expect to hear him say stuff like that. Um, Poncho's a cat in a dog eat dog world. Uh, he stays out of the drama. Okay, so now this is like a lesson that I've learned from improv. Uh, I've done improv for many years. Um, and improv 101, people are always trying to do fight scenes. Um, I don't know why it's our human nature to start off with fights. So it's like, I made you this cake. That's not a cake. It's not my birthday. Who are you? Uh, and that's just our instinct to be like that. Um, but people don't want to see that. People want to see people succeed. Um, unless you're a real housewife or Larry David, people don't want to see you fight. Um, so we try to keep Poncho really uh, good natured and, um, and like have a positive vibe, generally speaking. Um, all Poncho's references are from his broad knowledge of pop culture, nothing too trendy or high culture. We try not to do anything that's not going to last past the day, you know, no joke of the day kind of thing, but we do do plenty of pop culture. My man, Cy. Cy, you think you can dance? Uh, <laughs> rain, huh? Guess I'll just stay inside and do the Opum Gangnam style dance again. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's funny. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, the rest of the character Bible I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about was keeping your content um, real sounding and not trying to be funny. 
so another thing from the improv world um, is you don't want to try too hard to be funny because you're your funniest when you're just being yourself. Um, so we, we had uh, the weather that we wanted to make interesting. Um, and so like, say in improv you're gonna do a scene and you get a suggestion. If somebody says dildo or tampon, it's not funny. Somebody maybe laugh, but it's not funny. Uh, but what is funny uh, is if I, somebody says umbrella or cloud, and I got two people to come up here, which I'm not gonna do, but if I did, uh, and just had them have a conversation about umbrella, and they said something like, oh, my umbrella broke, I had, it was a little bit of a, a, a episode this morning. Um, just like hearing that kind of thing from a brand, I had what some are calling an episode when they said they were out of coolers this morning. Um, it's just like a funny thing, not because it's like a hard hitting joke, but just like to hear uh, people talk normal and say things when they're not thinking um, is often the, the funniest uh, thing you can do. Um, so an example of that is when we started our Facebook Messenger bot, um, we had the onboarding process, and this like dumb little joke that we put in there, people always like get a real kick out of it. And no matter where you say you're from, Poncho will either respond with, oh, I DJ'd there once, good crowd. Uh, <laughs> or he'll say, uh, oh, my ex is from there. Huh. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> And those are, that's just like, it's just like things that you hear people say that are just, it's just funny because you're being yourself. Um, so when we created the Facebook bot, it was really important to me that uh, the conversations that he was having sounded like conversations that you would have with any other friend. Um, and so we try to keep his voice as real as possible. Now, uh, one thing that's nice too is that when you're talking through this filter of a character or a brand, um, some things are funny that wouldn't necessarily be funny if it was you saying it. Uh, for example, a, a person eating too much pizza might seem sad, but Poncho eating too much pizza is very funny. Uh, so that works out great. Um, cool. Okay, so talking uh, real and not trying too hard to be funny, just being yourself is often the funniest thing. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, oh, no, okay. Uh, so on, on our Facebook Messenger bot, we are always trying to think of um, other ways that we can do things. Uh, and around the inauguration day, um, we we're a bunch of uh, liberal snowflakes at Poncho, so we were feeling pretty upset about it. Um, and so we, we asked ourselves, what would we want out of a Facebook Messenger bot on that day? Um, and we decided to try this thing called Poncho Therapy. And it was our most successful like experiment uh, A-B test. That's a word tech people use, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, thing that we did. Um, and it was so cool, and I loved it. Uh, so on inauguration day, you could chat with Poncho. We sent out like a push notification, uh, and there was three different therapies you could do. Poncho scream therapy, which was just like <laughs> jabbering on your keyboard uh, out of frustration, and then Poncho would jab her back and encourage you to keep going. Um, <laughs> and people loved it. Uh, <laughs> The next one was uh, Poncho Emoji Therapy. So you would send emojis of how you were feeling, very sad or angry or whatever, and he would send back, this is a patented term that I came up with, uh, emoji vibescape. Uh, don't steal that. <laughs> of things like karaoke or you got a new haircut and everybody likes it. Um, and so that was meant to make you feel better. And then the last one, which I thought was, it was crazy to see the way that people interacted with this last one, uh, Poncho Listening Mode. So you could say, you know, whatever you said, and Poncho would say, uh-huh. <laughs> Go on. Uh, a lot to unpack there. Uh, <laughs> and, and people used it, and it was so nice to see people use it because it was just such a crappy day, and people were getting their frustrations out, and it was like, thank you for listening, Poncho. And it, it was just so, so nice. Um, so that was really cool. And that came from, that stemmed from us saying, not like what should this brand do on this day, but what would we want to see done on this day? Um, okay, so lastly, uh, I feel like sometimes these talks uh, lack on practical advice. Uh, so I'm gonna give you practical advice about one of my favorite things, and that is uh, puns, uh, puncho. Um, so uh, you may think puns are easy, but some people can't do it. So here's a quick and dirty trick uh, to do a pun. Um, I'll give an uh, So what you do is 
One way you can do it is take the word you're trying to pun on, think of a rhyme for that word, think of a phrase where that rhyme would be, and insert the original word back into that. So for example, when we send our forecast, there's always a subject line that's usually a pun. Um, so for this forecast, uh, I feel good about this weather. It's not perfect, but neither is my homemade beer. Um, we need a pun for the subject line. So beer is the word that we're going to try and pun on. So think of a rhyme for beer. If you can't think of one, go to Rhyme Zone, uh, <laughs> this sweet website. Uh, and here we see, <laughs> I hope nobody's here from Rhyme Zone. I do love your website. I use it every day. Uh, clear. Clear is a, is a, is a rhymes with beer. OK, now we need to think of a, a phrase that has clear in it. Uh, right? Uh, if you can't think of one, go to idioms.freedictionary.com. <laughs> 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 uh, and you can see, uh, do I make myself clear? OK, great. Now we sub back in that original word. Do I make myself beer? Uh, I feel good about this weather. It's not perfect, but neither is my homemade beer. Do I make myself beer? Great. Uh, so that's a quick and dirty tip to do puns. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, one of the producers of this event told me I should take questions before making my big conclusion. So now I'm going to take a few questions before I make my big conclusion. Uh, yeah. Hey there. Um, great talk. Thank you much for that. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, big ups to Rhyme Zone and it free dictionary items myself every day. Yeah. Ugliest websites in the world, but so helpful. So handy. Um, OK, so it looks like with the, with the uh, things like the, um, um, the it looks like you had, in addition to the content that you guys are creating, you also have some bots that you created in light of the election. Are those mm -hmm. some, those are chat bots? Um, yeah. So we have uh, we have one of the most successful Facebook um, bots. Uh, I don't know how successful Facebook bots are in general, but uh, ours is is one of the better ones. I think we have a really great retention rate. Um, and then we're also on Viber, Kick, and Slack, and maybe other ones I've never heard of. But yeah. Any any um, any quick uh, thoughts or suggestions on creating for chatbots? Uh, absolutely. Um, so uh, Poncho is in uh, Betaworks, and we also work with uh, Dexter is also in uh, Betaworks, um, and they make bots. Um, uh, so bots are very uh, hot right now. I feel like they're still kind of waiting to take off. But my, my advice for writing for the bot is to make it feel like you're talking to somebody and not like you're writing for a, a brand. Um, so like anything that feels like if you're testing it out and it feels like you're being thrown off by something um, that's taking, it's like you need to have that suspension of disbelief like you are talking to somebody. Um, so I think like just having responses for popular triggers that come up um, and having them sound real and be in that character's voice um, is the best thing you can do. And I think that's why ours is so successful because he'll always say something for the most part. Even our like um, error messages we try to make like kind of sound funny or, or fun, like, yeah, I don't know about all that, or something like that, you know, like, rather than being like, error, uh, this message does not compute, or whatever. Right. So kind of same principle is used for writing the actual content. Exactly. Yep, yep. Just trying to make it as real as possible. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. And then did you create those yourself, or were they bought? Oh, yes, my man. There we go. <laughs> Somebody's getting question. socks after, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, did anyone else have a question? <laughs> you guys talk about content creation. Like, we talked about Mason, how fast he did something. Like, you know, he thought about that morning, and then it goes that day. Mm -hmm. In Poncho, I don't know if you're there when it's created, but is there any second guess? Like, what should he be? A cat? A koala? A gorilla? It's like, no, did you run with cat? And then it's like the character. You made the list. It's like, OK, one, two, three in a day, like, I don't know if that would take a day, a week, a month, or whatever to create his character. Type yeah, there there's... may be more streamlined ways of doing this, but as far as uh, Poncho goes, um, it kind of found its voice over the years of like, we started with like a lot of comedy writers, then we got down to a few, and then got a, added a few, and like um, everybody, like you can hear, a li like the USA Network thing, for example, like we had one writer who just thought it would be funny if Poncho liked the USA Network, and he talks about like suits and castle and royal blood or pain. I don't know any of the shows, but he talks about them all the time. Uh, and um, that was just like a weird characteristic that got added. And then we eventually were like, OK, let's stick to what we have. This is the character Bible. These are the things that we know about Poncho, and we're not going to stray from that. So it was like a long-term creative process to get to what his voice is now. 
Um, but there, you could just sit in a writer's room and bang all that stuff out and then go from there and maybe adjust it as you go along. But we've stuck with what works best and what we think is the funniest. That's all the time we have for questions. Cool. Uh, oh, we got to do a big conclusion. So, uh, uh, wait, uh, big conclusion. Uh, and everybody's got to go crazy because we got, need a good tape and they'll throw socks. Um, <laughs> let creatives be creative. Uh, be yourself. You're funny even if you don't know it. And think of your brand as a character. Your content should reflect your character's characteristics. Thank you, guys. Thank you.